What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we are going to be talking about observables. And observables, like a lot of things in life, follow the Pareto principle. 20% makes up for 80%. So like 20% of what the vast knowledge of observables and RxJS, you only need to know 20% of it. And that 20% will handle like 80% of use cases. And I'm gonna try and teach you that 20%, like what you really, really need to know and not, you know, the whole entire encyclopedia. So we use observables for asynchronous programming. Why do we use asynchronous programming? To make sure our UI does not freeze. Really, like really at the end of the day, on the front end, we use, we use asynchronous programming and observables front end because we don't want the UI to freeze. But there also is performance use cases. So we also, you know, we need to worry about performance and that is more back in development. Back in development, asynchronous programming is more for performance. So let's just talk about a very 10,000 foot overview about how observables work. So I am a YouTuber. I have subscribers. Whenever I publish a video, whenever I have some type of event, whenever I have some type of the smallest emotion, I literally just broadcast it out. And I'm just kidding. I, I really don't. I try to keep strictly to whenever I have a new tutorial, I broadcast my tutorials out to my new subscribers. That is kind of the relationship of a observ observ observer observable. So this would be the observer, also known as the subject. This is going to be the observable. And the way that observables subscribe to my channel in real code, this is what they call it, they subscribe. It's just like a YouTube channel. So you subscribe whenever you want to hear the particular information that I have to share. And that is pretty much the whole entire idea in a nutshell, but it goes much deeper than that. But let's just kind of inch by inch get into this thing. So what we are going to be using is what's called HTTP client. HTTP client is literally just a fancy wrapper around observables to give you all of the features that you get with HTTP request without a lot of the work. So it just abstracts away a lot of this and essentially you have what looks like this. So you will have dot get or you have dot post dot put, then you have the URL. And then whenever you want to get information from it, that is when you subscribe. And whenever you subscribe or whenever you actually call this function or whenever this value actually produces something you will be notified. And this takes the form of, you guessed it, HTTP. So in this, so whenever you make a network request, we make sure that we make it asynchronous because sometimes it, a network request could take like half a second. And if your UI hangs at all, you could possibly lose people. People's attention spans are so short that you need asynchronous programming because if this blocks and you get even a hang up for half a second that user could leave your web page and it compounds on itself. So the first thing that we are going to be doing and we can just stop talking about it and we can actually start working on it. You want to install JSON server. I'm going to be creating a fake JSON server. You could create your own database, but for this case, it's so simple. I would not recommend doing that. What you really want to do is you want to install, you just type in npm install JSON server and that will automatically install everything for you. You can install it globally, you can install it locally. I've got it globally installed on mine and go ahead and press enter. I've already got it installed so mine's probably going to take a little less time than yours but next thing that you want to do is you want to go into your root file, not your source. You don't want to, you want to go into like the actual root of the application. You type in new file and add db.json and you go in here i've got the actual you can go on my github and you can pull this or you could type at your own if you want to 
this one's just going to be the exact um, array that we used in our service. So you could also just get it out of your service if you want to, and you can install it that way, whichever way is, uh, it's totally up to you. But, I, but you need to make sure that you have this right here because this is how whenever you install or whenever you start JSON server, that's going to be the API endpoint. And if you've done everything correctly, you can go to this link right here. Notice the Pokemon, that notice this, these two things are, that's how they're interlinked. You could just have it with none in there and you could go to the localhost, I think, but mine is set up that way. And that's how I'm gonna uh, actually set mine up. So if it's working, it will have this, and this will give us some test data that we can kind of play around with so that we can actually call HTTP uh, client and actually get it working. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go into our actual service and make the API endpoint. And the way that we are going to do that is, I'm just gonna go up here, I'm going to go import, or actually I'm gonna go const, make a variable up here. Actually, yeah, let's just keep it up above here. Then I'm going to go Pokemon API is equal to HTTP. And we can actually just, I'm just gonna copy this into there. And that's going to be our API endpoint. So next thing that we want to do is we want to get rid of this actual array and we're going to act, we're going to bring in our HTTP client. So first thing is I'm gonna go up here Go private HTTP, and we need to bring in HTTP client, HTTP client. Okay, and we actually need to, sometimes it's really finicky and doesn't want to bring it in automatically, so I'm gonna go in here, HTTP client from at angular common. Angular common and go HTTP. And that should, looks like it brought it in perfectly. So next thing is we want to go this.http.get and we're, we need to make sure that we tell it, you don't have to do this, but it's good, it's good practice to tell it that it's going to return an array of Pokemon. Then what we want to do is we're gonna pass in our Pokemon, our URL endpoint. And next we need to change this to an observable because it's no longer. So many people, you, whenever you start working, what's gonna happen is you are going to see a variable, like what if we just called const, and I'm not actually gonna do this test, and we called get Pokemons what will likely happen is test is going to have a placeholder until this request actually returns. And that's like the whole entire idea of asynchronous programming. You are moving on to other areas of your program so that this can have time to finish and your, U, your UI or uh, your front end will not hang and you'll also get all the performance boost as well too. So we're gonna go Pokemon. Go right here. And that is going to take care of that. But when we did that, it broke other areas of our app. And also while we are here, let me make sure that we actually have this. It's always good to check that we have this Pokemon service. Don't know, I probably didn't need to do that, but I did it anyway. <laughs> okay, so Next thing is we're gonna to have to go into this list and refactor this list. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to go, I think the best way to do this, we're just gonna go in this dot Pokemon service. We're gonna go get Pokemons. Okay, so is this correct? No, number one, it's not correct because we're not actually hooking it up to anything, but it's not correct because we need to subscribe. Like I said, this is like a, think of this as like the YouTube channel and we need to subscribe to this. If we want information from a YouTube channel, we have to describe, we have to subscribe to it. So we go in here, we're gonna go make sure that we're returning an actual array of Pokemon because that's what we want. 
and let's go here see what we're returning back and let's go into this.pokemons and we are going to set this data so it's a lot different from this before so we did we had this before and you could do this but this will be optimal because you're waiting till the data actually returns okay so that should pretty much be it i'm going to go ahead and start this thing and see if it's working so we're going to go ng serve and i'm also going to look what's in that console log as well too so we can kind of see what's in it and we can see the actual data that we're getting back Okay, so we don't have the provider. I slipped up. We actually need to go in and we need to add HTTP client module to our module. So first thing is we go into our Pokemon service and we need to add this to our imports. I totally forgot about this. You may have been getting that error. Sorry about that, but we are solving this together. <laughs> okay. Shit, that I even checked it as well. I even checked it too. I need to take my own advice. So we're going in here and it looks like we've got, okay, look, inside of our console, we've got our data. We've got all of our nice little JSON coming back from our fake server. And now we can actually, we can remove all of our Pokemon as well too. Our services are looking good and we are getting asynchronous data back from our software. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.